Hi, my name is Jacob with Landmark Implement, and today we're going to talk about exact, the exact apply nozzle body, maintenance, uh, and how to take care of this system uh, over the years of your ownership. So first off, every machine shipped from the factory includes an exact apply nozzle maintenance kit. Uh, this maintenance kit contains tools, spare parts, uh, and is a very key piece of maintaining your exact apply system. I want to talk about the service parts of an exact apply nozzle body. While you can go to your parts counter and buy an entirely new nozzle body if you're having issues, uh, that does come at, at a quite a bit of expense that generally is not necessary. When we look at a noz nozzle body from a parts standpoint, the main wear item of a nozzle body is the stem itself. So there are two stems per nozzle body, uh, one for the A side, one for the B side. And all the product that flows uh, out the nozzle body is flowing through one or both of these, of these stems and poppets. So when we talk about wear of exact apply, this is where the vast majority of the wear is occurring. If you've got plugging or, or you're getting codes on your monitor for the stem sticking, uh, the stem is generally the main issue. Very rarely do we see failures of the solenoids themselves. Uh, really the main failure that we, we could see is if we get water intrusion into the electrical connectors, that causes corrosion. Um, but the solenoids themselves are, are fairly resilient. It's, it's just where the product is passing through. That's the main wear item. You can buy the solenoids individually if you have a solenoid go bad. Uh, you can also buy just the six position turret piece for the bottom. Let's say you catch one of these on the ground or one of the turrets breaks off. Uh, this is itself as a service part as well at the parts counter. The retention clips can be bought individually. Uh, if, you, if you happen to lose one, uh, there are some also included in the exact apply maintenance kit we showed earlier. The only thing that's really not serviceable from a parts standpoint without an entire nozzle body replacement is what I call the core of the nozzle body. So if this white cap were to break and, and expose the electronics inside, uh, that will eventually cause corrosion and failure. Um, the sometimes will, if we get some, some product intrusion or water intrusion and they freeze off, uh, you might see this start to bulge out. Uh, that might be time to, to consider replacing the nozzle body. But other than that, as long as this is sealed up, it's, it's not going to have any sort of major failure or need additional service. When it comes to the seals and the O-rings, uh, those are all serviceable as well. So if you do have an O-ring fail or one of these uh, seals for the turrets fail, uh, those can be uh, purchased at the parts counter, as well as the top O-ring for seeing the spray tube. One thing we want to be careful of when taking apart a nozzle body, especially in the field, is to avoid getting any sort of liquid or chemical inside of our electrical connectors. So on each nozzle body, you have three electrical connectors. You have your main eight pin, which this is plugging into the harness on the boom. If we're ever taking off a nozzle body and putting a new one on, uh, relatively easy to do, you remove the, the bolt, remove from the spray tube, and pull out the connector on the 8-pin. When you go to reseat that, uh, or if one gets ripped out while you're running, do make sure that we don't have any sort of liquid or chemical in there. Uh, you can use electrical contact cleaner to clean those out, and also the plug uh, from the harness. If necessary, just put a little bit of dielectric grease on the connector. We don't want to overload these because uh, that can actually lead to corrosion if we overload these with dielectric grease. When it comes to the side connectors for the solenoid, you got one on each side. Common thing that'll happen is when we're pulling a solenoid off and removing a stem uh, to look for buildup or, or a plug, liquid will, will drip out of where the stem seats in here because that's hooked to the spray pipe. So you might get a little chemical that comes out or a little water. And that can sometimes lip around and, and get into these pins on the solenoid connectors. So anytime we remove a solenoid, we wanna make sure that there's that nothing got inside of that connector. Uh, this is a common area for corrosion, and it's generally caused by disassembly and, and some intrusion of chemical or water. We also wanna make sure that when we're washing our sprayer, that we use high volume, low pressure on the boom when we're cleaning the boom. We don't want to be hitting these nozzle bodies with a high high pressure pressure washer. Uh, we just want to use that low pressure, high volume to, to clean the boom and the electronics. I just want to be careful because 
while these are, are sealed, uh, we can get water intrusion past those seals if we're using high pressure to clean them. If we do get liquid inside of these pins, that can cause them to corrode. And that corrosion then will lead to a failure of one of your sides of your nozzle body and you'll, you'll get electrical codes come up on your screen. If you do have pin corrosion on these two side connectors for the solenoids, those can be repaired by our service department. Uh, we have a kit that allows us to, in most cases, cut those pins off and reseat new replacement pins on there. Um, and that, that is an option if you have a handful of nozzle bodies that need repaired versus an entire replacement and help save you a little money. Uh, if we get corrosion on the main eight pin connector, uh, these pins are not serviceable. So that would require a new nozzle body replacement. There have been improvements to the sealing over the years of these nozzle bodies. So this is uh, the original nozzle body in the first several years of, of Exact Apply. Easy way to tell, there's, there's two ways. One, the logo on the turret is white. And then two, on the inlet side, it has a, a little bit of a smaller inlet. You'll see it's got kind of a rounded cutout uh, on the old style. On the newer nozzle bodies that have been out for like the last several years, uh, a couple couple main improvements you'll find is it's got a wider inlet here. It uh, just helps uh, ease some of the flow going into the nozzle body. And then we now have a black logo that kind of helps designate that it's the new style nozzle body. There have been other sealing improvements that have, that have happened over the years with these as well. So if we look at the new style seals on the solenoids versus the old style, the new style is a, a green seal that kind of has two ridges on it versus the old style seal is more of a flat band blue style seal. Those seals are available from the parts department to uh, Im improve the sealing on these solenoids. There are some machines that do fall under a product improvement program that uh, John Deere will, will provide seals and labor to retrofit. So talk to your service department if you notice you have the old style seals and see if that uh, product improvement program is available for your machine. There have been some additional sealing improvements on the nozzle body as well. So on the harness side of the nozzle body, they're, they've improved the sealing on the top side of the connector that plugs into the eight pin. And we'll show a picture of what that looks like. It essentially is a, a tar substance that seals the top of the connector and prevents uh, chemical intrusion or water intrusion as that nozzle body is out on the boom exposed to the elements. Those uh, harness improvements are available also uh, as a pigtail that can be spliced into the existing harness and doesn't require an entire harness replacement. And that's something your service department can help you with. John Deere recommends inspecting the stems of your exact apply nozzle body at 750 spray hours. So while this is an engine hours, uh, what we're looking for is how many hours have been spent spraying. This can be found in your Gen 4 monitor. One way to tell spray hours is to go to your Gen 4 monitor and go to the menu applications and scroll down to work monitor. This work monitor has various counters that can be configured by the operator. Uh, it does come with uh, up to five counters. What we would typically recommend is, is have one of these counters reserved uh, to keep track of this from a maintenance standpoint. So you can rename, you know, counter E your exact apply inspection counter uh, and be able to then watch the time worked in tank one to be able to see how many hours have been accumulated uh, for that counter uh, between your service intervals for exact apply. So what John Deere recommends inspecting is the exact apply stem itself. So if we take apart our stem, what we're wanting to look for is uh, wear on the top cap from our Viton seal on the top of this poppet uh, resting against it. We wanna make sure we have a good smooth surface and a, and a good quality seal uh, to prevent leaking or, or drip down. So you can look at the top of the Viton seal and see if you see additional scoring or marking. This is a brand new stem, so we don't have any uh, to show here. But we'll put some pictures on the screen of what it looks like for various wear stages.
So we'll want to take a look at the top of that seal as well as the seat of that. Next, we want to look at the, the poppet itself. This is a brand new poppet, so it's got very smooth sides, no scoring on it, and its corners are, are fairly um, intact. There's no additional rounding off on those corners. And then we can look inside the barrel of the stem itself and look for that same scoring. This is your main part of your exact apply. So as you're pulsing, the poppet is inside of the stem, rapidly moving back and forth, which causes it to wear. This wear can vary depending on uh, how, what kind of chemicals we're spraying, how abrasive are the, are the chemicals passing through the nozzle body. Uh, also, it was impacted by how clean we keep the exact apply system. The recommendation is to do a daily rinse. So let's use the fresh water rinse uh, function to pull water from the rinse tank and rinse out the boom at the end of every day just to keep chemical from sitting in in these poppets and causing corrosion. It also helps protect those seals. So we want to make sure we're doing that daily rinse, um, but even then these will wear over time and that's where that 750 hour interval to inspect is, is recommended. And then you can replace these stems as needed across your boom if you see wear over time. We highly recommend replacing the stems uh, in, instead of replacing the entire nozzle body as there's a significant cost difference uh, for maintaining the system. We're most likely the only thing that's going to wear on these is the stem itself. Another thing to look for is rounding off on the corners. So as these continue to, to wear, these corners will round off and that can cause the car, the stem, or excuse me, the poppet to kind of rattle inside that stem and not pulse correctly. And that can eventually lead to sealing issues and causing leaks. When we rinse an exact apply system, we, with our freshwater rinse um, from the Gen 4 monitor, we want to make sure that we rinse both the A and the bead side, regardless of which side we've been spraying out of. The reason for that is we look at our inlet and where our two stem seat is no matter what, even if we're only spraying out of the A side, we have chemical that is resting against the poppet on the B side as well. So the solenoid is, is and that spring is keeping product from flowing through the stem, but we still have chemical seated against the top of that seal on that stem and that can that can lead to buildup and corrosion and uh, additional wear on these stems. So when we go to do the rinse, it's it's best to enable both the A and the B side and spray fresh water out of both ports on the exact by nozzle body. This just prevents any of that buildup or corrosion from occurring on either one of the stems regardless which one we're spraying with. Same is true when we talk about winterization. So very important to winterize the exact apply system, winterize both the A and the B sides. So we're passing winterizer through both sides of the nozzle body through both stems. It's also important uh, to make sure we're keeping the system protected from even slight freezing weather. I have one of my training nozzle bodies here as an example of uh, an oops that occurred when that didn't happen. So this machine got down to 25 degrees one night with chemical left in the boom and that led to the clips breaking off on the top of the nozzle body. So this is a common failure for a freeze out is product will freeze in the main spray pipe and it'll cause the clip to pop off and the nozzle body to drop. And once that clip breaks, that requires an entire nozzle body replacement as this is a key structural element of the nozzle body itself. So do make sure that you winterize these. If the temperatures are gonna get low at night, get them indoors or at minimum blow out the boom so there's no liquid in the boom. The other thing winterization uh, helps with is protecting our seals. So if we have winterizer, uh, especially like a John Deere winterizer fluid that um, has some uh, lubricating properties to it, it helps keep those seals lubricated and prevent them from drying out and cracking in our um, stems, especially that Viton seal on the top of that poppet. So that's where we recommend using that uh, John Deere winterizer and avoiding those ethanol, methanol, alcohol-based um, winterizers that can be corrosive to seals in your sprayer. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video or reach out to your nearest Landmark location. Uh, talk to your CTS, your service department for 
any sort of configuration, optimization, or diagnostic needs.